let's start. Um, what I'm going to talk to you about, and this is actually going to be a fun uh, lecture because we're going to talk uh, quite a bit also about, we're going to do some actual uh, hacking, which is, uh, which is always nice. So uh, we're going to talk about first line of defense, how we can uh, also patch using uh, Cloud Foundry and the Cloud Foundry infrastructure, automate uh, patching of critical open source vulnerabilities. We'll also uh, do some hacking around them. Just about me, two sentences. I'm a VB product at Sneak. At Sneak, we help developers and organizations use open source and stay secure. Um, we won't be touching too much on that, but that's the world that we're touching on. Um, and I was, uh, you know, you can see here the roles of where I was. Um, uh, quite a few of the people that are in Sneak today, I know from back in those uh, cyber days. Uh, so we're going to talk a little bit about the open source usage, uh, the growth there, how security relates to that, update versus patches. Uh, we're going to spend hopefully most of our time doing some hacking, then quick summary and Q&A for uh, whatever, uh, whatever may come up. So first of all, open source is awesome. Uh, open source is eating the world. So uh, you know, it's why rewrite something that's already been written, that's been tested, uh, that works great, uh, and not focus only on writing the exact uh, core business logic that you need. Um, and we see this as a key driver for digital transformation, or however you want to call uh, fast-moving teams uh, that, you know, that, that need to move fast and, and, and use whatever they can to do that. Uh, this is uh, growth that we're seeing year over year. So we're seeing exponential growth in the number of uh, packages that are being uh, added each year. It varies between some of the ecosystems. You can see that in uh, Java, it's uh, more or less a little bit lower than 30%, so about 28%. Uh, in some other languages, by the way, such as JavaScript, uh, we're even seeing a much larger uh, growth, but still a large exponential growth uh, year over year. Any ideas how many uh, open source Java packages out there in Maven Central? Guesses? One, 10, 100, how much? 20,000, another guess? No, okay. So 229,000 uh, packages, uh, libraries, and again, this is 30% uh, growth year over year, and you can see some uh, nice numbers when it comes to the uh, other uh, languages as well, so uh, a, a very large number. Um, downloads per ecosystems uh, per year grow uh, between 50 and 100 percent uh, year over year, so both growth in the amount of open source packages out there that developers are using for various needs, but also in the actual usage. Um, and we're also seeing a similar thing with Docker, so uh, more and more of uh, the very high growth in the number of publicly available Docker images. Um, so most of your application code is open source. Uh, you know, usually over 90% of the code that's actually being developed, uh, executed, and, and deployed eventually is open source. Uh, just to look at our uh, small Spring Boot app that I, uh, that I uh, prepared for today's demo. So uh, this is uh, one of the free files that I've created, has overall 80 lines of code, so that's an impressive uh, app uh, that you'll see us uh, hacking later on. And uh, these are the dependencies. So uh, as you can see, there are seven direct dependencies. One of the things that happens with open source is that each open source package in turn uses additional uh, open source packages. And then there's actually quite a lot of open source uh, packages that you're bringing in, again, running in production, deploy powers of your app, you don't even uh, necessarily know and aware of that. Any guess for how many uh, de uh, dependencies overall this uh, miraculous app is actually using? 500 is good, is a good number, it's actually over. Uh, 500 would have been more if it was in the NPM or something, but this is 66 total dependencies, okay? Um, so still, you know, a, a large difference. And any idea how many lines of code overall? Quick guess. 100,000? A couple of thousands. So 713,000 lines of code, and that's 
uh, and that's with the spring, which is uh, even more lightweight. So, uh, by the way, I am counting in the 730,000 the, also the 80, so that may skew the numbers a bit. But, uh, but yeah, so anyways, uh, uh, you know, the, the lion's share by far, and obviously this is a demo app, so, uh, you know, it does, it could get to 90-something percent and not to 99.99 like it is over here, but still uh, the majority. Um, open source is cool, is great, but it does carry risk with it. Uh, here are some examples of known vulnerabilities that uh, are disclosed and then were exploited and have a very large impact uh, in, in the latest years, uh, Heartbleed, um, a, a remote code execution vulnerability in OpenSSL, hurt quite a few uh, organizations um, uh, and, and across a, a few of the, uh, of the OSs. Um, uh, Shell Bash, that was, Shell Shock, that was a Bash uh, vulnerability, also a remote code execution. Within hours of the disclosure, uh, there were large-scale uh, denial of service attacks uh, all coming from compromised uh, computers that, uh, that, that this uh, vulnerability exploited. And there's uh, the infamous, which we will hack today, uh, Apache Struts 2 vulnerability, which was used to hack into Equifax uh, last year. Probably most of you have heard about that. Uh, and especially if, uh, you know, uh, if you're scored in the US and uh, exposed records of over 143 million actually there were a few more millions that were discovered later. But anyways, so uh, known vulnerabilities in open source, as open source creates more and more components, as more and more people use it, and as the ROI for hackers to exploit known vulnerabilities is very, very high, because to exploit a known vulnerability is very easy, it's public, the code is open source, you can just you know, write an exploit, it's on in the, in the wild within hours, and also, the ROI is high because many organizations are potentially uh, vulnerable. That draws a lot of attention. Bottom line, a lot of attention is drawn, and we can see um, uh, a large increase. This is in the open source application dependencies. Okay, so very large increase. Any guess on the trend when you're looking uh, at the uh, operating system of vulnerabilities? For example, if we take uh, Red Hat Linux, thoughts. Thoughts and prayers. Okay, um, so actually there we're seeing an improving trend. Um, so, you know, the, the main explanation for that is that it's way more mature. There's not, you know, huge amount of growth in the number of uh, uh, libraries at the OS level. Uh, they're managed by, uh, obviously out of the 200,000 packages you saw before, they're, ma they're managed by various maintainers with various, uh, 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 you know, level of security uh, knowledge and experience and, uh, and tactics. So there is some, some hope that we will, uh, with time, maturity, and uh, putting things in, in place, we will get to that level of maturity um, as well also in the application world. Uh, and, but still, over three quarters of the top uh, thousand containers uh, out there uh, have known vulnerabilities in them. So, you know, most chances you download an Ubuntu container or Red Hat one, uh, it's vulnerable. So, um, what happens in the uh, operating system world? So, in the operating system world, you know, you have uh, companies like Red Hat and, and, and Canonical that have your back. So, here's an example of a vulnerability uh, in uh, PHP that. Uh, was discovered in all versions of PHP and enables you to run uh, arbitrary code. Uh, 5.3, the version 5.3 of PHP has retired, so they didn't issue a fix. So there was no fix on 5.3, only 5.4. But if uh, they would have upgraded uh, one of the uh, uh, of the Red Hat Linux distributions that had 5.3 on it to 5.4. Obviously, there could have been quite a few uh, competi backward compatibility uh, issues that eventually, you know, developers or, or sysadmins would have to resolve. So came Red Hat, and they provided, uh, they backported a patch, a fix for 5.3. And uh, so that means that if, if you're trying to look at how can vulnerabilities be fixed, in the operating system world, it's easy. 
right? It's, it's easy. Uh, all you need to do is run yum update open SSL, apt get update. If you're in Ubuntu, if you're on Red Hat, you restart the machine and you're done. You don't need to take to, 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 you know, to take into consideration to test or to think about whether this will actually break your entire uh, machine. Um, in the <coughs> application world, it's not exactly the same. Uh, so, you know, struts released uh, uh, 2.332, uh, which had the fix, but uh, many organizations had a 2.3 that was four or five years old. Now try to upgrade uh, four or five years old of struts uh, with all the versions. Uh, you restart that, it would just not work. Um, so there's a lot of uh, resolving that needs to happen. So not that easy in application dependencies. Uh, so why not upgrade now? Why not, uh, like every vulnerability we're seeing, why not upgrade it, as, as we said before? So one of the reasons, it might break functionality, right? Like we said, you, you, you upgrade four years of struts, you rerun it, you know, maybe uh, it, it, there's a good chance that functionality won't work there. It could be that there's no fixed version, so you just can't upgrade, or that you know, you don't have a direct dependency upgrade. So think about a situation where I'm using A that uses struts, and A just doesn't have a version yet where they, you know, where they update the struts. Now you need to, uh, so, so, so there's nothing you can do, um, and there may be version conflicts in others. So what we're suggesting, and we'll take a look at that, is how to patch first. Um, so just, you know, patch quickly, uh, for whatever reason, uh, uh, free the developers from needing to uh, uh, address something that's very hard now, like upgrading four years of struts. Uh, first of all, you need to find the, the, the patch. Where is the patch? It may be fixed in a newer version, like happened in struts. Uh, it, it, there's, some, uh, there's some that are less maintained, some packages that are less maintained, and then an external PR, uh, an external pull request could be there, or you can also write it yourself. And you, then you need to apply the patch. So you found the patch, how do you apply it? You can either fork and apply it uh, by yourself. Um, you can do a static build time patch, or you can dynamically patch at boot time. What we will show in the struts is the approach where <coughs> we take the fix uh, from struts and we uh, build it in, uh, in uh, patch time. And now comes the fun part of the demonstration, which uh, is actual hacking. So let's take a look now. What I have here, okay. First of all, I have here uh, two running apps, uh, Spring Goof and To Do Exploit. To Do Exploit is, you'll see soon, is a Struts app, and Spring Goof is a Spring Boot app. Uh, to Do Exploit, this app is the amazing. Uh, to-do list app, so, you know, I can, uh, mm, a second, I need to log into this amazing app, or does it not let me do that, one second, uh, I just want to show you this amazing app that we prepared. It's called my to-do list. Uh, you can see that I can create a to-do, right? I can do a hack. I can do it uh, 1970. As you can see, this is a very impressive uh, app. And uh, I added here a to-do list, okay? So this is uh, that uh, a Java to-do list app. Um, and now what we're gonna look at is that if we're looking for a second at the, this is the infamous uh, dependency tree for that app, okay? So as you can see, um, we're using uh, this uh, web common, and as you can see, obviously, like we discussed before, every, every uh, dependency has a lot of dependencies that it uses, and you know, to do, uh, this one is used, and then this one is used, et cetera. And somewhere here, we're also using, and these are all ones that are marked as vulnerable, but what I want to show you is that we're also using here uh, the struts2 core uh, uh, component dependency, which has this arbitrary code execution vulnerability that we discussed. 
version 2.3.2, it was, uh, it was uh, fixed. And that vulnerability, what it does, it is enables you uh, to run code in the content type. So what they actually do, and we'll see, we can see the code here. This is the actual patch that fixed the struts vulnerability, which we then backport uh, in order to patch. And I'll show you that uh, in a bit. You can see here that on this localized util, uh, this find text uh, um, function, the message it executes here e dot get message. This actually uh, uh, tests the code, and if there's an OGNL, the Object Graph Navigation Library, uh, a code in it, it would actually execute it. Now this is the fix where it you know, does an if, tests it if, if everything's okay, and if not, um, uh, it disallows it. So um, let's now actually go and hack it. So, uh, one second. Can you see well enough? Or not really? Uh, zoom in here. Is this better? Okay, cool. So let me see one second where I am here. Okay, this is the Java, this is the, uh, the one we discussed. This is the to-do list web struts, the app we just saw that has this exploit. If I go, I have here this uh, exploits folder. Um, take a look at this file, okay, and you remember this is the actual uh, malicious uh, piece. So in the content type, this uh, uh, ampersand here, this is exactly what runs this OGNL that we saw before. And here you can see that somewhere, okay, we define here a process which we start, etc. We run bash. And I have this command, which I'm going to just replace with any command I want to run. So this, uh, this will eventually execute any code I want uh, in a new process um, uh, as part of bash file. Cool. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you how I'm actually exploiting it. So um, this would be running the env command, and then it would be running the etc password command. This is a live demo. so. You know, if something doesn't work, don't kill me. Um, yep, so what happened now? I ran it, okay? And you can see the HTTP request. You can see that this is the content type that came as part of the HTTP request. <coughs> and you can see here my uh, env. You can see here all my uh, environment variables um, as they are. I'll show you another one, as I promised. Uh, we can... Uh, I'll run here uh, etc password and uh, passwd. This is my uh, etc passwd. And any other uh, command you want to execute uh, locally. Cool. So we have this uh, vulnerable uh, uh, situation. As you saw before, we, uh, we have this, uh, this application with all its dependencies. And, but you know, upgrading is hard. For all the reasons we said before, we don't want to now upgrade four years of struts um, with all the uh, application implication that it will take us, and we don't want to stop right now and, and, and you know, freeze all our R&D to do just this. So we're saying let's patch uh, first. So what I'm going to do, and this is how I'm going to actually use, um, I'm going to actually use Cloud Foundry to do that and to automate that. What we have created with Cloud Foundry is we've created a, um, we've created a build pack that instead of the regular Java build pack, and now we've implemented it into the, jo the Java build pack, um, what it does, it, one second, let me find it, yep, it's here. It, uh, that build pack would also patch uh, any critical vulnerability that we had uh, configured for it to, to patch. So what this would do is it would create a push uh, to do exploit, the same vulnerability we had, 
the same WAR file we had, so nothing changes, but just the build pack in build time has a configuration that uh, if it finds this such a high vulnerability um, uh, in, in, in struts two, it would patch it, okay? Again, taking that same code, <coughs> the same patch, we backported it to previous um, uh, versions of Apache and uh, of struts and would patch it, so this would run now, okay? So what I wanted to show you after this deploys is how now that same app is not vulnerable anymore, okay? Meanwhile, just as this uh, takes place and not to keep you bored, let's uh, do another hack, okay? So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna look at a second application. Uh, this one has the uh, spring break. So this is my application, simple REST app, okay? It has, um, let me show you, it has, um, it has like very simple, um, I can look at items, okay? So sausages, milk, beans, okay? I can look at the first item, I can find items, I can, you know, very simple uh, app. This is uh, with Spring Boot, and, it, and it's a, uh, a REST uh, application. Now, Spring Break vulnerability, who here heard of Spring Break vulnerability? Okay, very big vulnerability found in Spring. Uh, enables, again, remote code execution. Uh, found just, uh, just very recently. Uh, we can look at its definition. Okay, it was found in REST Web, uh, REST Web MVC. Um, and again, it runs a similar expression language that's similar to the OGNL, which we saw just now at the struts one, that enables you to uh, run malicious code when you're using a patch request, which is apparently an HTTP um, uh, potential uh, uh, parameter. So now let's go to exploits here. And I'm gonna show again how this one can be exploited. Uh, let's look at this text, right? So what it would do, again, it would do this replace op, and this code actually is the one that's running, uh, would run and execute uh, your code, everything that's here in command. Now, let's uh, run, let's see the exploits I have here, and I'm gonna run actually this one, okay? So what we're gonna do is run this text, okay? We're gonna change the command with env. Again, let's run env. Um, and look, it's a regular easy curl command to this Rust API, just puts the patch parameter, right? And, uh, and that's it. And, and, and again, puts the, the text here as the uh, content type. And once I run this uh, with this item, I get the env uh, of my computer. So another example of uh, a critical vulnerability. Look how simple it was to exploit it. Um, uh, this was one in spring, actually. Uh, so we're done here. We just, uh, we just had a new vulnerability come up, a, a new, uh, sorry, a new uh, version uh, came out of uh, uh, to do exploit just now, three minutes ago. Okay, deployed. I'm gonna try to see if the patch actually fixed something. So this was trying to run again, as you remember, the env against the uh, to do uh, vulnerability. And I'm probably not in the right place. One second, Java goof and exploits. Okay, let's run it again. This time, I'm getting an exception. Okay, so this time I'm getting an exception uh, of invalid input, and, uh, and that's it, and I can't see the end. So, vulnerability patched by build pack automatically by Cloud Foundry. Thank you. Um, so, you know, want to summarize uh, again, 
kind of the approach and what to do. And uh, so, again, first line of defense, automating patch and app dependencies. Patching is actually an old concept in the operating system. We saw that before with what Red Hat and Ubuntu are doing. Very easy. They create a patch for you. Um, all you need to do is, is run a yum or an app get and you're, and you're done. But a very new concept in the app world. Um, application dependencies, if you really think about it, are just pieces of, of OS, uh, of infrastructure that are within your apps. Why not treat them the same way you treat uh, operating system? So prediction, uh, <coughs> automating build time patching, uh, which we call in coin, and Gartner has also coined for us precision patching, uh, will become the easiest and safest way to resolve vulnerabilities before attackers exploit them. So again, key vulnerability, not easy to upgrade, release today. You know, you'd want automatically Cloud Foundry in the build pack to patch them today. So even if you just upgrade two or three weeks from now, you're still covered. Um, and Cloud Foundry uh, and Sneak as the one kind of sourcing these uh, patches and helping you out, make it all easy. Um, yep, so bottom line, open source, we discussed, important to find, fix, prevent, and respond to vulnerabilities. Open source is awesome, but uh, enjoy it responsibly. Uh, that's it, any questions, I think? <laughs> I tried to run so I have one minute for questions, or maybe two. Yeah, that, um, that build patch presumably is online only. Like if, if I'm running in a you know, on prem or a cloud environment, how's it going to retrieve you know, your checking the sneak vulnerability database? Th that's a great question. So we, we also have a on prem registry of, uh, of patches. Um, that you know that we can maintain, and and, and that's the way it could it could happen also on uh, on uh, on on-prem. I must say we're also looking. It's it's not as uh, common yet, uh, as like well adopted yet. But uh, multi-packs is also something we're looking at to use this and, and just add patching as another build pack as part of the multi-pack. But uh, yeah, today we have it as either a store on AWS uh, open with all the patches or we can, uh, we can provide a kind of an online registry for it. I don't know why that happened. Yeah, sorry. APIs. Yeah, yeah, definitely. We have on-prem solutions that are coming. We have quite a few banks and such that are customers today that, uh, that, you know, that would want this to run only on-premise, so whether it's on their uh, uh, environment. So yeah, definitely. So you don't have it in your store? No, we have it. We have it as an offering. Yeah, we have already quite a few customers that are using it. I'm getting the T sign, but maybe someone has one more question. One more question. Okay, it's been a pleasure. Thank you very much, everyone.